The number one thing I probably hear most candidates complain about is being unsure whether or not they pass their background. Let's discuss. Hey, before we get started, remember, we have those two gifts in the description for you. One is the Getting Started Workshop. It's going to walk you through every phase of the hiring process, possibly some that you might not even know about. In addition, though, we have an add-on in there. We have some hidden bonuses, one of them being a candidate eligibility exam, where it can link you out and show you, hey, do I have a good shot at this or not? Just because you don't do well on it doesn't mean you can't become a law enforcement officer. Just because you do well on it doesn't mean you're guaranteed a shot at becoming a police officer. So take a look at that. The second one is a free coaching call with myself or any of our other instructors. We've added a significant amount of instructors so that they're more available for you. So jump on, use that call. Now, your background process or your background check. A lot of, I've said this before, a lot of people think, oh, you know, I'm completing my background check. No such thing. Your background check isn't actually completed until you finish all your remaining conditional phases. So when I say conditional phases, I mean everything after, say, the board interview. Some departments go out of order. I understand that. It's not all streamlined and normal. But the standard, somewhere after the, the board interview, you will be, you'll be kind of tagged saying, hey, you passed. We're going to start your background hiring process. A lot of departments will even do a pre-screening, right, where when you apply, you'll have to fill out a pre-screening form that has, you know, maybe a page or two of, of criminal activity or past activity, that's a pre-screening form. An actual background check can be anywhere from 20 pages to 60 to 80 pages, depending on your background. And you have to fill that out. And the investigator will go through all that, including your references, your past work history, your credit, any criminal activity, maybe in the past, any substance use, things along those lines. The problem I see a lot of people go into is they say, oh, they're contacting my references. They're saying they're wrapping up my background. Well, the issue with that is Everything past that point when you start your background, so your medical screening, your polygraph, your psych, right? Maybe even a chief's interview or a civilian panel interview. All that kind of gets lumped into your background packet and your official submission to HR, to human resources for hiring. Just you have to take into considera consideration that a law enforcement department is a government entity. And they report to HR, whether that's city, state, or local, or excuse me, local, state, or federal. HR is usually a whole different department, and everything has to be submitted and approved, and and then HR has to approve it. And your background is one of those because HR does all the other aspects of getting clearances, things along those lines. So don't ever think your background is done until you get your official hire letter. Because say if you got a speeding, say you're applying to you know, let's say California Highway Patrol, and you get a speeding ticket from California Highway Patrol right before you're getting your official offer, and your background's been technically completed, right? They can still rescind any conditional offers or remove you from the process for that because it changes your background. So keep that in mind. But what this training session is about, it's not about necessarily going through your background. It's about waiting for your background to clear and, and what that looks like. Understand that it can it can be lengthy and it's only made longer by by a couple different aspects. One of them being you, right? You could make your background process significantly long to the point to where you miss the academy and, and you get non-selected or you get pushed out of the out of that hiring announcement. And that's by not having your documents ready to go, not not submitting things on time. I very much discourage waiting for the last day to submit your background packet, right? You have all these other people. Remember, you're racing against the clock here. If if they have if they have 100 openings, but only 25 billets to the police academy, and they have, you know, 50 qualified applicants. When I say qualified, I mean they pass all their backgrounds, they meet everything. They'd love to take all 50, but if they only have 25 billets to the police academy, they can only take 25. And if you've been one of those latter part of the 25, right? Say you got your first 25, but you're, you know, you're kind of taking your time to get everything in. And I understand you want to make sure it's well, but you're taking all the way to the max deadline to, to schedule your exams, to schedule your poly, to schedule your psych, to, to turn in your documents. And you're, you're going all the way to the last day. 
there's a good chance that 25 other qualified applicants might get through. And they're not going to sit here and say, oh, you're the most qualified app. No, they're because you're not a guarantee yet. You're not a guarantee until even if you you are the most qualified applicant, they're going to take the first 25 that they can get through the process and hired. Yes, they may have a ranking system and they and they may put you on that. But if if it doesn't look like you're going to make the academy, the last thing specifically now when departments are short staffed is they're they're not going to waste a billet. They're not going to, hey, hey, we have 25 billets, but we're waiting on these last four that are really top tier, you know, guys and gals, and we want to hire them. Oh, the Academy's coming. Their their documents and stuff aren't going to be approved by that time. So we're just going to send 21 to the Academy. No, they will not do that, right? They're going to take 25 and it's going to come to the first 25 that are cleared and ready to go and are eligible. I'm not saying ranking well isn't important because it is, and they will give you that leeway through the hiring process. But when it finally comes down to the final deadline, they're not going to wait for you, right? They'll just say, "Hey, we'll put you." We'll, we, they, if you're nice, or if they're nice about it, they might roll you into the next hiring cycle, right? Uh, and set you up for the next academy, maybe. But that might be six months, right? Uh, the other aspect of it is they might just tell you to reapply. So, and, and that's the unfortunate aspect because then you made it all the way through the hiring process. You were a qualified candidate. You made it through it. And then you have to redo everything. So, so you don't want to do that. So waiting around for your background, your background check, your background results to, to be clear, it, it's a component of it. And it's one of the hardest parts that I see most people, most people take. And we, you know, there's some terms for this in, in both law enforcement, military, those things. And it's called hurry up and wait. So you hurry up, get all your documents in, get everything done, and then you wait. And it's so tedious and so stressful for candidates. And I promise you, you've been in that point at some point, or you're going to be in that point at some point. And you're just thinking to yourself, wow, why did I rush to get all this stuff in? You rushed to get it all in because you wanted to be one of the first uh, candidates selected for the polygraph, selected for the psych, selected for the medical review, selected for the chief's interview or the or a panel interview. That's why you want that. That's why you, your background so critical. You want to be the first person that's quote unquote done their background, right? If, if you're there and your background investigator says, hey, this, this gentleman or this, this lady's packet is done, it's ready to go. I'm I'm ready to submit to you, Chief, or submit to HR. Then that's a fantastic place to be on. Not every department will do a pre-hire, right? Not every department is going to say, "Hey, you're we're going to pick you." The academy doesn't start for three months, so we're going to pre-hire you two months before the academy, get you all situated, get a, uh, uniforms ordered, everything like that. Not every department does that. Some and more are doing it now because they don't want to lose candidates. They don't want to say, "Hey." We have this candidate, we're ready to make them an offer, but we're going to sit on them until it gets closer because we don't want to just have them here doing nothing and we don't want to pay them for doing nothing specifically when they can't go to the academy yet. And we don't want a nut. But that what I'm getting at is that leaves you open to being poached by another department, right? So, so more departments are doing a pre-hire, but not every department is. So that's you might be stuck waiting around on that. And that's the risk the department takes. That's the department's fault if they wind up losing you to another department that's ready to bring you on right now. You know, if you reach out to the department and say, hey, department A, department B is is making me a final offer right now. Uh, I know you said I was done everything and I'm just waiting on my final offer where we are. You can leverage that. And I've done that with plenty of coaching members to get their top agency, right? Their number one picked agency. And it works out really well. But some departments will say, well, there's nothing we can do about it, right? You just have to wait. Yeah, we're going to make you an offer. You just have to trust us. No, I don't I don't recommend you doing that. You have nothing concrete to back that up other than them just saying that. And for all you know, they could go into a hiring freeze or they could, or they could, you know, the academy could have an issue. There's just so many things. So obviously, that's why you select your, your departments carefully, your top three departments carefully, so that if any of them make you an offer, you'll be able to accept it. But yeah, when it comes to your background, when it comes to the process of it and waiting around, you want to submit everything as quickly as possible and you want to be waiting. Now, what do you do if you're waiting for a long time? How do you address this? I've mentioned this before. It's definitely something that we do specifically with our, our coaching members. We put a time frame on it. 
it's not always this, but this is the typical. We put a four week time frame on it from zero contact, zero contact. I'm not saying, hey, I haven't heard from my background investigator and it's been four weeks, right? But I did do my 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 polygraph two weeks ago. No, anytime you're, you have any contact with any part of the hiring process, your counter starts over. But if you get to that four week time frame. That's when you want to follow up and you want to follow up with a professional email. There's a lot of different ways to do it in our online course, which our coaching members have access to as well. We have email templates, right? Plug and play templates that are professional and set up. And we do that so that you don't make a mistake and you don't, you don't drive your investigator, or your hiring official crazy, because the last thing you want to do is tick them off. And then they have a animosity towards you. Remember, everyone's human. No one's perfect here. They can make mistakes too, even though they shouldn't. It happens all the time. Just keep that in mind. You want to generate a professional professional email. So when it comes to following up, you want it to be an email. You want it also to be on a Monday morning, right? If it's not, I mean, Monday afternoon, that's fine too. But you want it to be on a Monday, preferably the Monday morning. And the reason why is that gives them a whole week to respond. If they don't respond in that week, then you want to send another follow-up email professional that references the first email. Hey, sent this email on this date. Um, haven't seen a response. Just confirming you received it, right? It's nothing that you're you're beating them up about. Now, if a week and a half goes by, you know, your first email on Monday, your second email on the following Monday, and now it's Wednesday and you still haven't heard. Now you can possibly pick up the phone and make a phone call if you have a contact number or if you have a text number that you can send a message to. And you can do that. I've seen it and I've just recently seen it with a member of mine where all their com communications have been via phone, via phone. And the individual, the background investigator has been saying, yep, hey, I got your packet done. They contacted him a couple months ago and say, yeah, your packet's just about done. I'm about to submit it. That was two months ago. And then they reach out to them a week ago or two weeks ago and say, hey, just call in to confirm, haven't heard anything. Oh, yeah, I'm wrapping up your packet today. I'll submit it. I'll submit it tomorrow. And then the academy is a week away. I, From experience, I can say it's going to be unlikely that this member gets into the academy. And I think the reason for that being is because the background investigator dropped the ball and you have no recourse because all you can say is, oh, I talked to them. Well, well, where's your correspondence? Oh, I talked to them via phone. No, because they can just say, oh, no, 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 that's what I was telling this individual, they still needed this, and they still needed this, and and that, and they delayed their process. There's nothing you can do about it at that point in time, right? If you don't do a, a professional and a, and a follow-up that can be can, that can be tracked via email, text, something along those lines, it's going to be he said, she said, you know, your word versus them, and ultimately, they're not going to, they're not going to bother with you. Right. If, if they've already have that academy slated, like I said, so if you're a week from the academy and they said you're going to this academy, but you're not done your process and you hear that other people are done their process. It's it's not looking good that you'll actually make that academy and then you might fall into that situation where are they going to try and get you in the next academy or are they going to tell you, hey, you were just non selected due to more qualified applicants. And that's, that's bad, right? You know, you think a department trying to rebuild their ranks and this is all the departments across the nation typically trying to rebuild their ranks are going to are going to try and keep qualified applicants, you know, there because they've already spent the money, you know, it's but sometimes there's policies, procedures saying that, hey, someone has to apply during that announcement, during that cycle, hiring cycle. You just don't know and you don't want to put yourself into that situation. So you do want to follow up, but you don't want to follow up to the point to where you're too you're pestering, right? Once again, using an analogy here or an example have had another member at one point, you know, waiting to hear back was calling every single day, sending email. They finally stopped corresponding with this individual and then just sent a generic generic email saying, Hey, uh, we're still reviewing X, Y, Z. We'll contact you when we need anything. Please don't contact any further. And then what do you do now? You can't contact them, right? Because they specifically said, do not contact us. That's a, that's a tough spot to be in because do you start looking for other departments, right? Do you start, do you sit back and just wait, especially, you know, I never recommend applying to just one department, but I also don't recommend applying to more than three at a time. So if you don't have any other in the pipeline and you have this one and you're right at the end, right? Your background's wrapped up, you finished everything else, but you have zero communication and you don't know 
Sometimes I've seen departments just completely ghost candidates where they don't even tell them that they're no longer in the process. And it's been six months, a year, and no one knows anything. That's the unfortunate, but you can mitigate all of that. All of that can be mitigated by following these steps that I'm, I'm telling you right now and documenting this correspondence, right? You don't ever want to put yourself in that position where, you, where you're saying, hey, this is my word versus their word. Uh, it's just unprofessional. It's not the way to do it. And then it's, this is the best way to, to save you. I've seen, I've seen multiple members send emails, right? Follow-up emails. And then their background investigator calls them, right? And then what do you do? Oh, well, they called me. And, and then you just say, you send another email, right? And you just send a, a follow-up email that says, hey, thank you for the call today discussing X, Y, Z, uh, just to confirm you don't need anything from me at this time, or just confirm this is what you needed from me. I'll be sending that over in another email ASAP. That's it. And you, you solved all your issues right there. So a lot to consider going into this, right? You, you know, the background check can can take a while, you know, depending on how much needs to be looked into, depending on how many how many applicants one background investigator is assigned. You know, if I'm assigned two or three individuals, I can probably bang that out pretty good. If I'm assigned 10 or 20, you know, it's going to take me a minute because I'm I'm trying to keep one, I'm trying to keep everyone in line. I got folders, I got files. I'm trying to balance that all out to see who's what, what references have got back to me, what employers have I contacted, you know, which candidates have I ran through an NCIC check or or criminal database check. It's just there's a lot that goes into it. So keep that in mind. Be patient, but at the same time, be prepared to follow up. Once again, that four-week time frame is where it's where I, I draw the line. But there's there's a lot more that goes into it. This is pretty much the the generality of it. And I think it it will make a, a significant difference for you if you follow these steps. And it gives you a little bit gives you a little bit more of a sense of relief, right? You say, hey, I know from the last point of contact, I'm going to draw the line at four weeks, right? That means at no point in time over a course of a year, would you contact your or would you pester your, your background investigator or hiring official more than 12 times, right? No. I know some people that send 12 emails a month. Not ideal. Most of the time, background investigators just get upset about that and say, I don't, you're not the only person I'm working with. Don't think that you're... You're above everyone else. And that's kind of one of the stigmas that go along with pestering your, your background investigators. So, and then also always follow their direction too, right? So if they say, hey, we'll be in contact, please don't reach out. Well, that's true. And I, I wouldn't, but then at some point in time, where do you draw the line? If I were to get to six weeks and not hear anything, I'm sending a professional follow-up say, hey, just confirming I'm still in the process. I, I'm not looking for any additional detail, but just to confirm I'm still in the process so I don't pursue any other additional departments, right? And I would just say, so I don't pursue any additional departments. That's not that's not saying you're not pursuing the ones you already had slated, but any additional departments to replace maybe that one department that's missing. Keep this in mind. I hope this helps. Remember, those gifts are down in the description for you. The first one is the Getting Started Workshop. All the hidden bonuses in there as well. It's going to walk you through everything. Plus that one bonus, that is the candidate eligibility exam. Take it. it it'll give you a, a better idea where you're at. And then additionally is the free coaching call with myself or any other instructors. We've just bought, brought on a bunch more instructors for you. So time slots are available. You don't have to wait as long to jump on a call with myself or anyone else. Stay safe and I'll see you next time.